So what do you do when life becomes a lot more complex and you feel like you don't quite have the tools and the resources to help you overcome or, you know, get through that situation? So we're Marco Bella. We're here to talk to you about that. So this month has been one of those months where life just throws curveballs every single day you wake up and, and you know nothing and you know nothing about baseball or cricket literally i, I actually honestly could not like, we're gonna be honest right to you just said honestly <laughs> i don't even know how i made it through this month like never would have made it honestly there's been moments when i've just felt like checking out like Checking out. No, legit. Like, oh my gosh, like, Bethel. Checking out. And it sounds so dramatic, but like, there's just some moments where you just feel like, really? And by checking out, I just mean like, I'm so done. Okay, do you want to give everybody else a bit more context? Because this sounds so vague and opaque at the moment. Sounds it's like, so what dramatic. are we talking about? What are we talking about? Um, but I think, as we said at the beginning, you know, <sighs> as you get older or the older you get, life becomes a lot more complex. And depending on how. how um, experienced you are and the level of support you how might have around you are. how equipped you are that's the word I was looking for mm. actually I kept saying tools and resources you but equipped buckle. and if you don't have what it takes Mm-mm. yeah you'll buckle under the pressure you will buckle but we're talking about how we have been able to kind of go through it, I suppose yeah so because of the positions we hold within the communities that we serve mm. We find that there are a lot more people who come to us with, um, you know, sensitive information <laughs> or, you know, they feel actually this and is the best moment. place. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. I think it's about mentoring. It's about supporting. It's about encouraging. It's about empowering. It's about being um, somewhat, you know, a therapeutic space that people can find yeah. comfort in. That uh, That's kind of the role that we normally play, right? Yeah. Like, so what do you do when your earth is just kind of, like, shaking underneath you and you just feel like, <laughs> honestly, you just don't even know what to do? I've had a couple of those moments. and I feel like you have too, but you've just managed them differently. Um, there's been a lot of shifting sounds. There's been a lot of stuff happening. Like, almost every day you're waking up and there's a phone call about this, there's a phone call about that, there's this going on, there's that going on, there's this decision to make, that thing. Oh, honestly, it's just been a crazy whirlwind. That was a huge sigh, Bethel. Oh my <laughs> gosh. How have I made it through? I don't know, because there's been moments where I've just gone, God, like, I don't know. I actually don't know where to go from here. And, those are and I think that's the best moments. place to be, because like, that's, as human beings, that's where we're supposed to go. To say, I don't know. I genuinely don't know, because you could be the most experienced person in any situation, mm. but then there will be moments where you will literally crumble down to your knees and just be like, do you know what, actually... But this one, I've got no clue. Yes, you might have no ideas clue. about what to do, but... Yeah, and I feel like I'm always like an idea person, aren't I? Like, <laughs> Mark is like, if we have a question, we just pray about it and we'll wait for the Lord to answer. I'm like, yes, we'll pray about it, but I have so many ideas, like how we can solve it. <laughs> but to be fair, in this situation, I just feel like... I give up. <laughs> I, I, I ain't have a clue, Lord, like... <laughs> I give up. I give, I give up. up. I give this one right back at you because it's too much. Mm. I feel like the scripture that's really held me in this time has been um, my yoke, take my yoke upon you because my yoke is, my yoke is easy. easy light. My burden is light. And mm. and every time when I just feel like I cannot hold it anymore, I just go, no, 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 Lord, actually you take this burden because I cannot take it. And that has been one of the advice I've been getting from even, you know, my friend who's been saying, it's not your burden to carry. Like, you know, when when somebody else comes to you with an issue, it's not your burden to carry. You know, you have to give that back to God and be like, okay, so this person has shared this with me, but actually this isn't my burden. Mm. This is their thing that they're sharing with me and they're going through this trial, but actually it's not my trial, it's their trial. I think sometimes when you like, when you're emotionally invested in something, Sometimes that's why it takes its toll on you because you're mm. like, oh man, I just want this thing to work out for this person, for this family and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes when it just feels like nothing's moving, it just feels like really like what, what else do we need to do? Mm. You know? Mm. Um, but I also am reminded of the scripture that says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. So two weeks ago, 
I was at church and I was just like feeling really low with everything that's going on. And I just like tend to hide out when stuff is going on, which is probably why we were hiding out from YouTube. I know I've done a couple of funny shorts and stuff like that, but like, that's just like me clowning about and being silly. Um, but the real serious stuff, I just felt like it was really difficult to come on camera and like, what were we going to talk about? You know? I thought you were going to say pretend then for a moment. Yeah. Like, and pretend. Because I was like, what, what are we going to talk about right now? Because right now I don't feel like talking. And right now I don't feel... Yeah, I just feel like, wow. <laughs> and I think it's just been really exasperating moments where you just get to the point at the end of the day and you just feel like, yeah, I'm done. I'm just done with this day. I'm just ready for it to be the next day now. You know? And that's kind of been happening. <laughs> Because that's how hard it's been. It's just been like, I'm really done with this day. I don't know about you, but... Um, I've had a lot of moments here where I've just kind of stopped and just thought, goodness me, this is a lot to take in. Mm. Um, but, I, you know, as you know, I do a lot of reading. And so at the moment, I've chosen to read um, As a Man Thinketh by mm. James Allen again. Yes. And I found a lot of consolation in that because it's based on scripture. And mm -hmm. so, you know... A lot of what he's talking about is all the stuff that Solomon, I'd imagine, and David would have been talking about in Ecclesiastes and all of those sort of books of wisdom. Yes, exactly. And so one statement that's said in there is the circumstance reveals the man to himself. You know, I like and so that. I was just thinking like about that. how... The circumstance reveals, reveals the, the man, man to himself. himself. Yeah. That's similar to the scripture that says, um, the spirit of man shall sustain his infirmities. Mm. It's true, because like when you're in the heat of it, like when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were like, when they were told like, we're going to heat the fire mm. seven times mm. more, are you going to bow down or are you going to go in? What you going to do? What you, what you mm. going to do? I feel like we're in that point, like right now where it's like, are you going to bow down or are you going to, are you going to go in the fire? Like what you going to do? I feel like we're in the fire right now and it's hot. The fire is hot. And I think the most important thing for me has been about character development because every situation and circumstance that you face mm. is really about, you know, are you going to move forward? Mm. Are you going to stay in that place, inertia? Yeah. yeah. You know, and buckle under the pressure? Yeah. Or will yeah. you just, another word, capitulate? <laughs> um, but I feel like it's, it's, it's leaking out in the sense that people are starting to notice. So I was saying like two weeks ago, I was at church and... I was like trying to hide and like I went into the kids room and like I'm always in the kids room. If I'm in the kids room, it's either that like I'm super happy with the kids playing. But if I'm in there alone, yeah, <laughs> I tend to be hiding out, right? I was in there and um, the sister came up to me and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> They've spattered it. They've seen it. Um, I, to be fair, my head was like that on the desk. So <laughs> I guess you probably would be asking me that question. And I was like, oh, I'm just tired. I kind of just like try to divert play a little it down, bit, and play it to down. It. Yeah. I'm just tired and after church and all that. Okay. And she was like, you know, normally you're bubbly and happy and chirpy and, you know, laughing and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'm not like that all the time. And she was like, oh, yeah, I suppose, you know what? That's probably my ignorance and actually thinking that you should be happy all the time. Mm. Um yeah, and she said, you know, sometimes I do wonder, like, how you keep coming to church, like, even when you're going through all of this stuff and things that happen to you and stuff. She goes, you know, <clears throat> that was a bit encouraging, you know, for me. Like, actually, we do push through sometimes, even the hardest moments. Like, yeah. even when it's, like, a moment where I'm just like, I don't want to even face the day. I'd rather just curl up and be in my bed right now. Um, you know, you get up and you go, do you know what? This isn't about me. Mm -hmm. Um and actually, like, going to church and serving is not about us. It's about other people. So sometimes when we're going through our lowest moments, we'll still get up and go <laughs> and go and serve. And I think there's only been, like, a few times when it's been, like, impossible. Like, if you're literally infectious and you're like, nah, now I'm going to go and harm the people that I'm going to go and serve, <laughs> you mm. know. Or if we're going on a planned holiday or something like that. I think those are the moments where we take breaks and stuff like that. So two things stand out for me. One is the not knowing what to do part. Mm. I think that weighs on you so much because mm. as human beings, naturally, well, some people, most of us, we just want a solution to something yeah. so we can move on. Yeah, literally. Um, like, but can if you're we a, move on, yeah. please? But if you're in a place where you mm. don't have a solution, or you might think you've got a solution, but you know the implementation and the application of it is 
dependent on you know too many other variables. factors too many variables <laughs> that are not in your control not in your control and so you just then have to wait uh, play the uh, the waiting game and yeah. then that becomes really difficult because mm-hmm. now it's not in your control and then as you, again as human beings we want an element of control where it's like we've yeah. done this and we can see the progress and now it's all sorted mm-hmm. out and and so the second thing for me has really been about with all of these situations mm-hmm. learning patience, patience and letting go and i think there's a song around that you know which is you know as soon as i um, well, soon as I start oh, worrying, mm. and I let go and I, I let God have his mm. way. And I think so. The second part is really about I've got to a place now where I can actually just okay, I don't really need to solve this right now. Um, mm. I can air, share my views and mm. air out my, my opinions mm. and so forth, and then just leave it there just and rest, it. knowing that, that you've said what this you is the part that I can play right now. Mm. I've done my bit, and I can just wait for the rest of it to. Pan out and I like what you said like the other day you were like you know sometimes in your systemic practice you can hear something and just sit with it oh yeah that was the biggest thing ever I that feel like we're just lesson. sitting with yeah with it right now yeah. I feel like we're in that zone where we're like right okay mm. we're just gonna sit with it so thanks for reminding me about that <laughs> I've forgotten about that but yeah that's a really good point but I feel like it wasn't like that for me like two weeks ago when that um, sister came in and she was like oh you know you feel down and that week was just torture it just felt mm. like torture I was just like there was moments when I felt like my head was gonna burst like literally I just had this headache like right here and it just felt like oh my gosh mm. if I just hear another thing I'm just gonna burst like, I just cannot con- like this is too much um, and then I remember like it was last week Friday I was just done I was done done mm. done and I was in bed I didn't even sleep the night before horrific dreams it was just an awful week um and so like i remember on the friday that's kind of what kind of changed it for me because i came downstairs and i was just so low like i was so low i couldn't even sleep it was bad (laughs) and um there was a box in the house like a purple big purple box and i was like oh what's that (laughs) so i was like that's flowers okay did mark get me flowers that's really cute like not on that day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no when Mark oh, gets okay. me flowers he normally doesn't give them to me he normally just puts them in a jar and I'm like okay are we just decorating the house or are you giving me flowers <laughs> like, anywho so I think it's difficult with the time you wake up sometimes if I bought the flowers really early in the morning oh my gosh here we go wait, I just have to wait until she wakes up again. so anywho um, I opened it I was like oh really curious then I wondered if it was my friend because I'd just been speaking to my friend the night before and she was like you know you really need to let let this burden go and you just need mm. peace in your life and stuff and as i was opening i was like who is this who is it from who is it from so i got the card and this was the card it says a special note for you and on the back it says there for you because you are there for them and i was like wow that's like you know like those low moments when you're like god are you there like you know like even when you don't see him he's working even when you don't feel him he's working like this was a real moment for me i was like wow okay cool who's this from um and when i opened the card it said peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give i unto you let not your hearts be troubled neither let it be afraid john 14 verse 27 and the name is from the person who was talking to me in the kids' room at church on Sunday. And I was like, wow. Literally, this card, the words in this card, when I read the words peace, like, it was literally like the Holy Spirit literally <laughs> came into my heart and lifted the weight of, mm-hmm. of the burden that has been going on. And I literally started crying. I, I, I broke into, as the scripture says, groanings that could not be uttered. Like I could not even speak. I was just so broken and just like, God, you see me. Like you you see me, you know everything that's going on. And this this proves it because the scripture is just so pertinent. It was just like, peace. Like you need peace, Bethel. That's what you need. Mm. And I give that peace to you, you know, not the world, not everything that's going on, not all this chaos. You can't look for peace amidst all of this stuff that's going on. You're not going to find it, but, but I'm going to give it to you, you know? And I just felt like after that session, you'd taken Rhea swimming that time. (laughs) And, um, 
I literally just I just poured my heart out and after I just felt that I just felt the peace of God and I was like you know what it's okay I'm gonna sit with it and and I'm and I'm I'm gonna be fine and I'm going to move on and I'm going to be happy um mm. so thank you so much to the person who gave me the card and the flowers behind us by the way <laughs> about a week old now I think it's it? like two weeks old a week now I think a week and a bit yeah yeah um but honestly it just was it was amazing and I just want to say to you you know God used you in that moment to break an atmosphere mm. that was on top of my life and that was holding me down and I just want to thank you so much for that and to anybody that just feels a little tug to say get so and so a card or get so and so this or say this to somebody mm. that is actually the Holy Spirit using you yeah and I just want to thank, you, you know, you know who you are. And, you know, when I spoke to you, you said that it said I should write a card and I didn't know what to say. And then I just thought, what should I do? Okay, I should just put a scripture, but I didn't know which scripture. And then, you know, okay, God just gave me this scripture. He said, just write this. And I was like, mm. ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that certainly made a difference on that day. You could tell something had shifted. Mm -hmm. um, just lighter. Just much, much lighter. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, that's, you know, that's why we've been a bit quiet, guys. We've been fighting one of the biggest trials of our life. Um, but but we're winning and we're overcoming. So, <laughs> even though the situation might seem so bleak, yes. Scripture does tell us that, you know, um, it's darkest just before dawn. dawn. That's right. Um, and joy certainly comes in the morning. Yeah, that's and right. And the thing that I like that's been... A consistent and a constant throughout this whole um, season is that um, you know we do have uh, again family we've got friends mm -hmm. we've got um, you know as I was saying to you we've got books we've got scriptures mm -hmm. and yeah. that's really where the strength comes from the anchor um, holds the anchor holds and yeah. your strength is constantly renewed that's right so when you read something and you're empowered you're like mm -hmm. actually do you know what this is just giving me virtue it. for this season do you know I could do every this every day his messes are new you know yeah and absolutely reading the word every day absolutely. and just the scriptures every day and you know the Messages well, the, the other thing that, that I've really enjoyed, this has just brought me to life. The other thing I've just enjoyed, um, so reading as a man thinketh, right? It's mm. talking about your thoughts are really important. So, for mm. example, if you find out some new information about something, it's down to your thoughts how that situation mm. will play out. Mm. So, for example, if you hear that, oh, you know, you don't go there, it's really dangerous. Yes, mm. there might be real danger in that mm. space. But how you actually deal with the information mm. of, oh, there is danger, either you let fear cripple you. Yeah. and debilitate you so that you can't actually do anything about the situation mm. or you can take control of the situation and say okay there is danger out mm. there I am going to act accordingly yeah and that's a very different approach and mm. so um, even in dealing with the situation the fact that yeah. you've been able to think and see it well I've been able to you know from reading that mm. um, has actually given me a different kind of way of approaching the situation where I feel lighter yes I'm not worried about trying to find solutions no I'm in a position where I can actually support people and say, oh, it's okay. You know, don't, I would rather not look at things like yeah. that. I'd rather look at things this like way. This, yeah. And just wait yeah. on the Lord. And then just wait. Wait yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. Oh, I don't know my guitar. That would wait be nice. Wait on him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So guys, that's part one. If you want to know about part two, that's more about parenting. There's been some really deep stuff. But if you do want to know about that and you are a parent, watch the next video.